Hello Masoka Universe. Yes, I'm wearing Milan, but honestly I'm a little bit disappointing. I've been disappointed overall. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about this in a sec. Uh, but they were actually the only team that I felt comfy wearing. I was actually looking for other teams to wear today. Did not quite happen that way. Uh, before we go to Serie A uh, in where, I mean, it will be madness on the last day of the season. It might not be, but it potentially could be madness. Um, so before we get there, yesterday Benfica secured their uh, championship. I think it was the 38th, something like that. So um, with a win, um, forgot to talk about that. And in the afternoon, I did not see much, but uh, Galatasaray was 1-0 down at halftime to Bajakshi here, but turned the game around, so they are more or less secure for their uh, champ championship. I think is only one round to play. They have three points um, ahead, plus goal differential is very much in their favor, so I think uh, Galatasaray is also celebrating uh, their next title. Italy. Um, I actually, all I was interested in was today Italy. Yes, uh, the two big Spain Spanish teams, Barcelona, played a 2-2 at Eibar. I think probably the last time we see those. I like them. The pink jerseys, uh, whereas uh, Real Madrid lost at home to Betis 2-0. Uh, Real Madrid, really, really, really bad. They need to do a major rebuild. Um, I know there was not too much to play for, but that was true for many. Uh, Serie A, Kievo, Sampdoria, the early game ended goalless, <laughs> didn't bother any, anyone. But then actually the afternoon games already were quite um, interesting. I watched most of Parma Fiorentina, um, was kind of a cagey game, maybe at the beginning a little bit Fiorentina. Then uh, you could really tell Parma needs this win, because if Parma gets the win, then they are safely through. Uh, and putting Fiorentina in trouble, if Fiorentina gets the draw, then Fiorentina is safe. Um, yeah, so Parma 38 and Fiorentina 40 points. And I always remember that in uh, Germany they say, with 40 points you're safe, but that's an 18-team league. Italy and most others have a 20-team league, so I think 40 points is not the safety cushion that there is. That screams actually for another uh, analysis, what would be a safe um, points total at which you can absolutely not be relegated anymore if there are three bottom spots. Um, and Parma got a little bit more and then they get a free kick, I think it was 79th minute, free kick from the side, on goal by Gerson, uh, could have been a Parma um, attacker as well, but it was Gerson who puts it into the own net. Um, Fiorentina tried and tried to get the equalizer, but nothing really of note, and it ends 1-0 for Parma, so big scenes in Parma. Paired with the fact that yes, the Genoa only played a 2-2 draw, and let's quickly go there. I think, uh, uh, was it 2-2 a 0-0 draw? A 1-1 draw at, um, at home to Cagliari. This means the last day, uh, Fiorentina, Genoa has all to play for for both of these. And it got even worse for this. Because Empoli, Empoli, who looked absolutely relegated not too long ago, uh, gets a 4-1 win over Torino. Um, clearly Torino has not much to play for, and typically in Italy, then suddenly teams on the bottom start winning. But for me, this Empoli miracle almost up there with, I think, Crotone pulled one two years ago. Um, not quite there, but I think uh, it really looked a lot of the time like Empoli. Empoli wins 4-1. It was a quick equalizer, which actually would have meant good things for Fiorentina and for Parma. But now with that win, you, there is a possibility that you are relegated with 40 points. Udine won yesterday 3-2. Uh, and so on the bottom of the table, um, Parma leaps up in 12th spot. Cagliari 13th. So they had 41 points. They for sure cannot be relegated. Uh, and Bologna tomorrow plays against Lazio, where a point also sets them safe. But then the Fiorentina has 40 points, plus 2. Udine has 40 points, uh, horrible goal differential, I think, minus 15. 
are Empoli 38 and Genoa 37. Now Empoli plays on the last day of the season against Inter, so they have all to play for, because Genoa and Fiorentina, I wouldn't bet on anything there. Um, I think, I want to say a point is enough for Empoli. Uh, let's quickly say, then they have 39 points, this is behind Fiorentina. No, it's not enough, because if Genoa wins, then Empoli is down. They need to win. They absolutely need to win to be certain. Uh, Udine plays in the last round away to Cagliari. So uh, if Udine gets the point, they are safe. But it is really possible if Empoli wins, if Genoa wins, and if Udine wins, or Udine doesn't even need to win, if Udine loses, Fiorentina or Udine go down with 40 points, which is absolutely amazing. This... Italy is very, very dense around uh, the relegation zone. And if you just look at it in 10th spot, Sassuolo 43, Spal 42, uh, they barely escaped. They barely, barely escaped. So uh, the relegation battle will be really interesting. And because of the relegation battle, the results on the top of the league will also be interesting. Uh, we're also uh, setting up quite nicely for a um, very interesting last round of games. For it, don't set nicely up for Milan. Milan did their job. It was not pretty against Frosinone. Um, again, Frosinone is standing deep, but Milan is playing slow and with a lot of inaccuracy. And that's a killer, and they really, really, really had a hard time uh, breaking it up. I think at the beginning, Frosinone had even a little bit better of the game. Milan got into it, but you know, I think there was one shot by Baki Yoko that went a little bit wide, but not much happening. It was a dull, dull, dull game. Um, the second half starts with a bang. First of all, there was a huge chance by Borini right in the first minute after uh, the halftime. Empty net. I mean, there's a goalkeeper in there, but he has a free shot on goal. Take your pick where to pull it. He doesn't, uh, doesn't pull it in. Um, and Frozen only gets a penalty. About in his last game for Milan, uh, calls it, yeah contentious I would say I thought it was if the referee wants to give it he can give it but I thought it could have also gotten the other way fortunately Donnarumma saves I think it was Gianni or yes Gianno um, who puts uh, who gets there Donnarumma saves it and that actually woke Milan up then there were chances Borini another a really great chance that he actually has to make. The da doesn't make it, and then in the 57th, finally, I think it was again from uh, Borini tried to keep the ball into the box. I mean, just gets it in, and uh, Pionte gets a touch, was not offside, and ends his gold drought. Yes. Um, nine minutes later, Suso wonderful free kick makes it two nil, and I have to say, I mean, Suso. He's so predictable, but uh, if he gets a shot, well, Suzu is great. Uh, but you always see him, it's always the same move. He cuts in and then he wants to make the high pass in. It is deja vu all over, all over the place. Uh, Frozen on ahead, then two chances. Don Don Donnarumma had to do um, his work, but also Milan could have maybe scored a third. But uh, the game was more or less done. Best news of that game is that the new Milan jerseys are wonderful. I was going in my head through the past Milan jerseys. I want to say those are the best Milan jerseys since the Centenary kit. The ones in 2000, uh, from last season, they were close. Uh, they are close. They were also really, really good looking. Um, I personally didn't like that they had the reds. Uh, stripe in the, in, in the center but these the thin stripes and what i absolutely love do you see here here's all this adidas branding or puma has this form stripe ev everywhere and while there are here the, the stripes continuing why don't the stripes continue up there the um, 1718 kit had a similar where the stripes were nicely matching up but this one is perfect i mean there's nothing like this there's stripes are going over the shoulder and then connecting here it's really an old uh style look maybe the black crew neck collar could be a little bit better but those kits are really looking great really looking great i absolutely love them um i guess sooner or later i will have one of these because this is as i said 
it's not what I call a classic mini kit. This is closer to it, but you know, you'll get a little lighter red uh, and you know, have the, the classically uh, early 90s, late 80s look, uh, but this width of straps, but the thin straps are that absolutely great. Uh, pretty much up there with the Centenary jersey, Indiana. They're celebrating 120 uh, years. So yeah, great looking kit. 2-0, that means if Juve can win against Atalanta in the evening, celebrate the championship, Milan is already in a Champions League spot. Ronaldo has a big chance in the first minute, and then Atalanta show why they are the great team that they are. Speaking of jerseys, um, I may get used to the Juve jerseys, I still don't like them really. It's not a Juve look in my opinion, but okay, for one season, other teams have done more. I'm more bothered about the pink strap, but then what I saw what Lask is playing this upcoming season, I'm actually happy the way <laughs> with the Juve jersey, honestly. The weird thing is that Scudetto is uh, here and not in the center. It should be in the center. Uh, it actually should be here. Uh, but okay, put the center over here. Don't relegate it to a secondary spot on the proper rights. That, uh, that I don't like. That's the probably the stuff that I like least about it. Um, the pink stripe and yeah, the other half-half look. I honestly, yeah. Once in a time, okay, have to have half look. Um, Barcelona did it too, but they have some more relation to a half half look. Anyway, Atalanta actually was threatening quite some and took a deserved lead through Ilicic at half. Um, Juventus really disappointing them, especially I have to say Ronaldo. That was, I mean, whatever hit, he hit, right? He was bound to failure. Uh, you can clearly see Juve is in vacation mode. Um, and so I feared the worst, uh, but in the second half, seemingly Allegri uh, found some words. It was his last game, it was the last game. Do you want to spend this uh, last game at home where you celebrate the championship with a loss? No, you don't. And Juve came out with a, showing a little bit more, a little bit more urgency to the whole thing. However, um, Still not, not not many great chances, uh, half chances. I mean, he brought on Bernadeschi for Alexandro, which actually puts some forward. Then Barzali, another one who had his last game, had an emotional goodbye. Mandzukic came in, came in and then Moise Kain um, comes in late for Matuidi. So there were only strikers on, on the field and nothing defensively anymore. I thought, oh, this is going to go bad. Meanwhile, Mandzukic had equalized, actually really... Uh, Interesting goal. It was a wide pass. He just gets it before the touchline. Twists the goal, goes through the legs of the goalkeeper, and then slowly over the goal line. One-one. Uh, there was another chance for Atalanta. Juve really tried to get the winner, and I was hoping they will get it. But Atalanta deservedly gets the draw. I gotta say, I mean, uh, taking the first half into account, deservedly gets the draw. And I have forgotten about to mention, as it was all about the Juve jersey, those Atalanta third kits, I saw it, you saw it in my Serie A review, those are horrible, and I hope this is the last time we see them. Absolutely hated those. Um, and what's even worse is, it's not only that they have the turquoise and the dark uh, blue below, which maybe is somewhat defensible, but then why have the blue and black color that just... <laughs> absolute horrible kits. Uh, I was not watching too closely because I had on the computer some work stuff uh, to do. But well, I, I get a yeah, it was probably deserved draw, but not the result that I needed because now Milan needs to win at Spal. But a point for Atalanta at home to Sassuolo is um, is a point enough. No, it's not. Uh, At uh, Atalanta need needs win a point is not enough if Milan wins. So, well, maybe small, but I would expect they would get the, the point against Sassuolo. The problem is that the home game is not a home game because they play in the stadium of Sassuolo, which is their uh, home away from home, but also, also Sassuolo's home. It's in Regione Emilia, uh, who are absolutely, I think, uh, is, is it Regina? Regina? I think it's Regina, who is absolutely uh, pissed that that their stadium is used for those two teams now, but okay. It's a nice stadium, uh, nicely built. 
But there's one more twist to the tale, and I didn't. I only saw others. I didn't see any highlights. Napoli beats Inter four one. Having a four 0 lead, Zielinski, Mertens, Ruiz twice. Icardi gets a late penalty to make their score a little bit better. This means Atalanta overtakes Inter head to head. Oh no, maybe head to head. Head to head. They have uh, two draws, so a uh, goal differential. I think that's it. I have to check that one again. Any, anyway, Atalanta overtakes Inter, both on 66 points, Milan 65 points. And the one team of those three that really has an opponent that's all to play for is Inter. They have to play against Empoli. And Empoli needs a win to be on the, on the safe side. <sighs> it's going to be a crazy last day in Serie A. That much I am certain. Roma, I think, has a, will have a really, really hard time. I mean, for Roma to have a chance is Milan. Yeah, I mean, they could all end up with 66 points. If Roma wins against Parma, Milan plays a draw in Atalanta and Inter lose, they are all uh, on 66 points. Uh, then it's going to be uh, madness. I think that's the one chance that Roma has. Uh, also, if Milan... Uh, loses this will end if Atalanta Inter and Milan lose then Roma probably has a could have a chance I don't know now the exact uh, type type criteria but they can I guess at least get level and maybe there's a chance that they break into there remains to be seen uh, I will do, I, I will look this up in the my roundup video uh, probably tomorrow or later uh, Tuesday probably I pull it out on Tuesday let's give ourselves the time to really fig figure out well. So yeah, the last run in Italy is gonna be a crazy one. And I think it's Italy, then we have a Copa del Rey final. Spain is done, uh, France has a round to play, Germany is done, England is done. It will be all, all eyes on Serie A. That's how I actually like it. Still hoping that Milan will make it. Um, I see, uh, I give it a 25% chance that Milan will make top four. Not higher than that, but yeah, after all the teams that I have here, you wasn't. I, I, I was actually you were with the phone. I was actually wearing you with a Milan jacket. That that was my idea. Uh, I was also quickly thinking about shall I wear Inter because they made myself they made me a big favor by losing to Napoli. But I don't wanna jinx it there that much. I don't wanna go to them too much. Um, it would be actually a disaster for Inter if they lose the Champions League spot as well. Um, Milan won, Sampdoria got a draw, uh, Kievo got a draw, <laughs> a Fiorentina lost, so yeah, Roma played a draw. I need a Parma shirt, that's for sure, that's the one thing I'm missing. Anyway, I have the Parma scarf back there, so they're in safety. I am like that actually, that Parma is in safety, and I hope the Fiorentina does not get relegated. Uh, that's a team that needs to be up there. Genoa probably too, but Fiorentina to me even more. So yeah, but then I need Empoli to win. <laughs> Whoever goes down, it will be one of the those craziest uh, teams to be relegated. Fiorentina had had once a relegation uh, that should never have happened. Where they were actually in good contention. I think this was the first season under Battistuta in the early nineties. So let's see how it will go. Let me know what you think about Serie A. It's really heating up. It's going to go crazy. Um, all the other matches that I've been talk talking about. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.